This is Marvin L. Storm. Today we're here with Laura Drummondale. Laura, would you take a few minutes and talk a little bit about uh, your business, uh, where you're located, and a little bit about your specialty and how uh, long you've been in the business? Sure. Uh, the name of our company is Coastal Consultants. And we are located on the beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, so our, our circle of industry and business is a half a circle because we can't go any further south. Um, but we do work up in the northern part of the state along with transactions in Louisiana, Alabama. And uh, I had not mentioned before, we have a specialty in the timber industry, which takes us all over the southeast and even up into Canada at times. Well, that's cool. Uh, just you describing the area, I would imagine that it uh, doesn't get too humid there, does it? Oh, well, yeah, it's a little humid. Uh, <laughs> but we have beach breezes. It's a much more pleasant place to live on the Mississippi Gulf Coast than it is to live in central Mississippi. Uh, it's, it's much nicer, much nicer here. Oh, that's cool. All right. Well, Laura, would you talk a little bit about uh, your kind of pre-M&A business brokerage career before you... Uh, got involved in this business, kind of um, maybe what your background and uh, business has been, maybe educationally, and kind of uh, how you ended up being in, in the brokerage and uh, M&A field. Right. So um, I have a degree in chemistry and math. I had plans to become a physician. That was kind of my goal in life and uh, got married to uh, – a very nice gentleman that wanted to open an auto parts store and my life took kind of a left turn uh, so i began to learn about business we we built up our business over many years and then i wanted to try something else and i kind of became a serial entrepreneur uh, i had a manufactured home business i had an oil pipeline business um, some of the businesses i was very successful and some were just total train wrecks uh, there was many times that I would have liked to have sold the businesses, different businesses that I had for one reason or another, but I didn't know that business brokers existed. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them here in South Mississippi, South Alabama, or South Louisiana. When I found out as a late in life, when I was trying to figure out what the next thing I was going to do was, found out there was such a thing as a business broker, I said, oh, that's, that's perfect. I understand what owners are going through. Now, I understand how hard it is to figure out how to go to the next thing or how to cash out of all the hard work that they've done. Now, so that began that career. It's been about 12 years now. I'm a member of the International Business Brokers Association. I'm in a best practices group with business brokers all across the United States that's uh, associated with the American Business Brokers Association. And I'm also cert a certified business intermediary, uh, which certifies me to uh, it operate at the highest level of professionalism and to be able to tell you what your business is worth in today's market. Well, that uh, that's great. I know that uh, a lot of people that I talk to here on uh, the podcast and, you know, chatting with uh, the professional path and the careers that uh, preceded their involvement as an intermediary, uh, a lot of times does involve business ownership and and as you said, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, especially an entrepreneur that has been involved in multiple businesses, the probability that you're going to hit 100% or 1,000% in batting per launch, you know, is that uh, you're not probably going to do it and that you do have your hiccups and uh, your left turns when you were least expecting it and, and sometimes an outright failure. But it is through those experiences that give you such tremendous insight to what uh, an entrepreneur is going through as they build their business and as they start thinking about an exit uh, of what they need to consider. So I'd like to get a little bit uh, more of your insight into what you think uh, are kind of the personal characteristics and individual strengths uh, that have contributed to your success uh, as you've made this transition into being a business intermediary. Well, contributed to my success, well, I, I think they clearly know that I can empathize with the situation that they're, that they're in. Um, if they're in a uh, situation where they really need to sell quickly, um, I understand that, that, that difficulty in their mindset. 
Um, I appreciate that if they've run the business for 35 years, they're scared to death to sell it because they don't know, they don't know what's next. Um, if there's a, a husband wife team running a business and, and one thinks they need to move on to the next phase of life and the other doesn't, I, I understand that too. Um, I understand that you're running a business every day. You might not look at your tax return when the CPA sends it back to you. When I start asking you questions about it, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I don't look at mine sometimes. Uh, but all, but I have the knowledge to know where to look and what to look for um, so that we can get a real handle on where their business is right now. Uh, has it been stagnant for too long? Um, did it had a heyday in the past and that heyday's gone? Do they want to resuscitate it or do they just want to let it die an ugly death where it is? Um, you know, and, and they, they finally can, can talk to me because they know I've walked their walk and I'm not judging them. It's just, we have to deal with the facts. My son is my business partner and he says, sometimes I'm a little too much. Let's just talk the facts that I'm not quite sympathetic and soft and gentle enough with the sellers, but I feel like they do kind of have to sometimes have a come to Jesus meeting. Uh, so we really know where we're at. We, we can take it wherever we, wherever they want us to take it, but we have, we have to figure out where we are right now. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in business with your son? Uh, so my children were kind of raised uh, in a small business. Uh, when they were uh, infants, I had a Napa auto parts store and they were in a playpen behind the counter. So, uh, they um uh, and they've grown up both of them grew up watching watching mom run businesses and they know it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of hours and you know a lot of a lot of self-sacrifice and a lot of self-discipline to, to keep your own yourself motivated there's there's really nobody telling you you have to be at work at eight and you have to stay till five you have to find it within yourself to, to set those goals and and do what it takes to achieve them well, we have kind of a common uh, genealogy, I guess, is because my father was a mechanic and had his own business and a shop and did all sorts of repairs, uh, built it up to, you know, multi-bay type of situation. And once he sold his business, he was in a Napa auto parts store. So that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. So I kind of understand that, 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 that world of, uh, you know, going into the shop and, cleaning parts and sweeping the floor and you know, watching my dad under a creeper under a car with sweat pouring down his face when it's 100 degrees out. Yeah, I've been down that road, or at least I've seen my dad down that road. Anyway, so, you know, when you look at uh, your time you've been for the last 10, 12 years, uh, what do you think has been some of your greatest accomplishments and sources of satisfaction that you've derived from being an intermediary? Oh, I, I get so much satisfaction from this career path. Uh, I, it's hard to narrow it down to one thing. Um, I, I've been in sales my whole life, and now I don't feel like I'm a salesman anymore. I'm a matchmaker. I'm trying to find the right buyer that can achieve success buying a business from the right seller. Uh, and if the seller, I'll tell them right up front, if, if you want me to get an uh, irrational or unreasonable price for your business, I'm not your girl because I want the buyer to, to be successful. We have to have something that makes sense for all parties involved. And that's, you know, that's a relaxing position to be in that I'm, I'm not a salesperson anymore. I'm just um, a matchmaker. The other thing is um, when the sellers come to us, sometimes they've tried to sell the business on their own and they're quickly overwhelmed. Uh, with the difficulty of dealing with buyers that are just kicking the tires and wanting to get all their information and they don't know what to give them and don't know what to give them. And uh, when I come in and tell them, we can handle this, we can handle this for you. You just run your business. We'll take care of the rest. The, the, the look of relief on their faces that, that somebody is going to help them get through this painful process uh, is, is very satisfying. And also, it's, it's been satisfying. My older son was in business with me for a while and has gone on to great success. And now my younger son is in the business with me. And uh, I, I, pers I project that we will be a larger firm with many more brokers in the upcoming years uh, as, as I back sort of out of the business and he takes over with the young energy that uh, young hungry people tend to have. <laughs> Uh, it's nice to have a backup team and, you know, a succession plan in place. 
you know, as you uh, build your business and have considered the different types of services that you offer, do you have other fee-based services such as valuation or consulting uh, type of services that you offer your clients? Uh, yes, we do some consulting. We do a lot of evaluations. Uh, that seems to have developed into a key component of our business model. Uh, that you know, let us look and tell you what it's worth right now, and then let's devise a plan. Do we sell? Do we hold? Do we build? Uh, where do we go from here? But let's get the facts. Let's find out where we are right now, and we can move from there. And we do charge for that. Uh, for many many years, I did not. Uh, and I found that the commitment level of the sellers was not nearly where I needed it to be if I was going to work so hard. Um, so, so now it's, and we charge for it, but it's a deposit against commissions uh, or it's a uh, deposit to keep me in the game with them to help them get, get the business to the point where they need it or want it to be. Um, mm. Do some business plan creation for some bigger entities. It's got to be a pretty big, it's got to be, 30 million or greater company uh, before I'll dive off of what I do every day and create a business plan for a, for a startup kind of entity or a takeover kind of entity. Um, you know, trying to work by the hour is just not something that, that I'm comfortable doing anymore. I, I, it's taken me, I'm 61 years old. It's taken me many years to build up all this knowledge and I just don't want to spew it out at uh, pennies on the dollar on an hourly basis. I'd rather do projects. You know, as you uh, evaluate the, the different transactions you've been involved in, which uh, obviously have been hundreds over the years, um, what are some of the biggest learning experiences or mistakes that you've made as you've been working on these different types of deals um, that has benefited you in, you know, helping your clients that come after? Mm. Biggest mistakes I've made that have helped clients in the future um i wouldn't really say nope. mistakes but things that you've learned that have been really crucial uh to providing you know the insight to help people position their business for sales you don't learn everything overnight you know it takes time yeah um developing a way to help business owners understand their financials um has been a learning experience it i didn't realize how many business owners initially did not understand their financials um, if there was money to pay the bills hell uh, they felt like they were doing well and and because they don't understand debits and credits and assets and balance sheets and p and l's they just kind of throw their hands up and go try to sell one more thing when sometimes a business can be a lot more profitable by not selling one more thing uh, and changing their changing their operating procedures in a different way. Um, it, it took me time to understand that business owners didn't understand that and, and a way to explain it to them where it made sense to them and they could understand it pretty quickly so they could see where we were trying to go with their company. Mm -hmm. You know, as a... a you know, person that's been in the business for a while now, what would you tell your 30 year old self if you could give that person advice today? Uh, education. You can never have too much knowledge. If you're not a lifetime learner, you're probably not going to be successful at this business. Uh, part of the joy that I get out of it is it's, it's different. Every transaction is different. Every transaction is a, a minefield that we step through to try to get to the successful point, which is what everybody says they want, is to transfer ownership. Sometimes it seems like they're doing everything they can to stop that from happening. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, every, even if it's the same industry, every owner is a little different. Every situation is a little different. And it keeps you on your toes. Uh, it keeps you thinking. There's, there's nothing uh, that, that's just, oh, that's a liquor store, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's always different. It's always challenging. And I don't think you can ever have too much education about things. Uh, whether, you know, I, I'm waiting for the cryptocurrency business to come knocking at our door that they, they want us to sell a cryptocurrency. What do I know about cryptocurrency? It could be put on the, the head of a pin. Uh, but my 30-some-year-old son knows a good bit about it. 
Um, so you, you just have to keep educating yourself so that you can speak on a reasonably knowledgeable basis to anyone that comes to your door when you're a, a wide-based practice like we are. One final question as we kind of wrap up here today, Lauren. Um, as you look over all the changes that have taken place uh, over your career uh, in business in general, and especially since you've been an intermediary, what do you kind of see on the horizon that may have a big impact on, um, you know, entrepreneurs in generally, in general, or you as a, as a business intermediary that that will likely or may impact the future? Well, we have we have some some real fears of what the capital gains taxes are going to do in the upcoming years. Um, business owners getting ready to sell that's that's one of their biggest challenges is being able to recapture enough out of their business uh, after they pay taxes and still have enough to retire off of that's a that's a real concern i think employee wages are going to continue to increase which is going to make business owners have to work smarter and harder and it's also going to make employees have to work harder and smarter and uh, they're going to be continuing downward pressures on profitability um, and yet there'll be new and innovative businesses come online that we, we don't even know to think of them at this point. Uh, probably things uh, around uh, automated cars and uh, global warming issues that we don't even, we don't, we don't even know how to think of them, but there, things are going to change. Um, you know, the video stores are gone. The tanning salons are just about gone. Uh, things do change. And when we look back, they seem to change a lot faster than we realized at the time. Um, so we, we have to continually be aware of what's ahead and what's new and at least have some education of what's new so that we're ready to pivot our business. The, um, you know, the, the businesses that pivoted during COVID did fabulous. Uh, the businesses that didn't pivot and just waited it out, many of them failed. So we, we have to all stay on our toes. Yeah, you sound like my uh, algebra teacher in high school. You know, my first year algebra was that she told me, I remember the very clearly her standing in front of the class and telling us, you know, when we were griping about homework or whatever we were griping at, about at the time, that everyone in this room was going to be working in a business, most likely working in a business that we had never heard of before. And that was, at the time, that was just beyond my comprehension. I didn't quite get it, but uh, it's true. Even today, even today it's true. Well, thank you very much, Lauren, uh, for taking the time and sharing uh, some of your thoughts and philosophies with us here today. Thank you. If someone wanted to get a hold of you, what would be the best way for them to reach out and contact you so they could carry on a more detailed discussion with you? Sure. The, the best way is to contact me via email which would be Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at coastalconsult.org. Now, remember the org. Or you can actually go to our website, which is coastalconsult.org, and contact us through there. And we're glad to uh, have a uh, short conversation with someone. They can tell us what their situation is, and we can tell them whether we can help them. Or uh, if we're not the best person to help them, we do work with a group of brokers across the United States, some are who much smarter than I am. Uh, in, particularly in different fields, and we refer them to someone that can better serve, serve them. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lauren. And until our next episode, this is Marvin L. Storm. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Business Exit Stories podcast. For more information or to reach out to today's guest, visit www.businessexitstories.com for more details. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this podcast from your favorite podcasting platforms. And remember, maximizing business value at the time of exit doesn't happen magically. It takes planning.